working. All right. I don't have much time. I am Lord Cadrian de Flynn, and I am a wizard. This will have to be brief. I have slipped supervision due to a small riot when a war mage slipped his bonds. The warders are all taking him down. It'll only be a matter of time. But I received a, well, a question that needs answering. It would never have made it past the censors. But it may be my small chance to possibly make some amends for some crimes that have been happening through our society for some time. Not just our society, many of the worlds in general. Uh, yes. Here's the question that I received. Uh, I hope this works. You know, just why are necromancers always considered, or mostly considered, evil people, evil characters? Is there really such a thing as a good necromancer? A lawful good necromancer? Is that even plausible? And what's their obsession with death? Just ask it. <sighs> that was a question from a previous submitter, Rick of the Land of Hilliard. And his question has merit. It is a deeper question, one that I have slantwise attempted to address in a few of my prior videos for the sharp and attentive they may have gotten my somewhat subversive answers. But at any rate, it is a question that is germane and important, to be honest. However, there's two answers for it, one in my world and one in a wide generality of other worlds where magic exists and necromancers do their trade. Firstly, on most other places, necromancers, you see, uh, the reason why most people think that necromancers are purely and irredeemably evil is because of, well... Quite honestly, there's many stereotypes. Those who choose a path that is steeped in death and the understanding of death often take on such trappings that make them look irredeemably evil. When you wander around in tattered black robes, uh, blood-stained hands and implements that are gory to say the least, you're going to have a bit of an image problem. I don't think the classiest illusionist is going to be able to dress that up. So. In truth, many necromancers embrace the mantle of, of being evil. Uh, some of them truly are, of course. We just covered this Lord Voldemort, who certainly was steeped in necromantic lore and performed very evil acts, to the point where his own soul was diminished utterly. Yes, well, this is by far some of the most common of necromancers that you're going to find. They embrace the power of necromancy. It is a quick and uh, inelegant uh, path to power that for those who have the ability to choose. And the thought of uh, controlling a large group of unthinking minions, or as you get more powerful, intelligent undead under your command, and the fact that if you are using your powers to rail against society, that fact that every enemy that you kill becomes another soldier in your war. Necromancers are scary. It's just true. The ones who embrace the trappings of evil are very dangerous. And most people have a fear of death. That's kind of part of being life. They have the life urge and the death urge inside of them, and they spend their entire lives railing against that death, which must utterly come for all of us. It doesn't take a diviner to understand that. It just takes living for a little while and noticing that the people that you love in life or know eventually leave it. Assuming you don't meet an early demise yourself. Well, 
as a result, those fears are often projected on necromancers, and the necromancers who enjoy evil embrace that as well. In their understanding of death, they know that it, the railing against it is futile, and they flaunt that before those who otherwise would like to keep their head buried and not think too much about their own impending demise. So yes, necromancers oftentimes are evil, truly evil. There's not much that can be said about those types. But is it required? No, hardly. As a matter of fact, many necromantic spells don't have an inherently an evil side to them. Even a spell for animating a corpse under the right circumstances may be less than truly evil although it is often done for selfish purposes. That is not the only purpose for that spell. As a matter of fact, some white necromancers, a label that many who are not evil give themselves, um, know spells that can temporarily animate bodies. So, for example, if an ally has fallen and they are not strong enough to retrieve the body, they can temporarily animate the body to move their own corpses out so that they can be treated or buried appropriately. Some who follow the path of necromancy have only the most respect for the corpses of those who had once lived, because their understanding of death understands that there is a purity to death, and that it makes the life that people live all the more important. Those necromancers use their powers for good, or at least avoid the evil side that necromancers sometimes succumb to. They, of course, have no truck with demons that might give them you know, forbidden spells, and they stay well away from those things that can snuff out a person's life force, committing murder with their magic. It is just one of those things that necromancy can lend themselves to, that quick weapon, weaponized magic that can kill your enemies. So, and of course, uh, Throughout many worlds, the, the thought of killing one's enemies is actually seen as a good, as long as those enemies are monsters or enemy combatants, in which case a necromancer can then roll up their sleeves and unleash their full power against what they consider to be themselves evil opponents. In which case, are they any more evil than a war mage who can fry a multitude of people with a, with a lightning bolt or a bolt of disintegrating force? I say not. It's just a matter of the circumstances. Like I said before, necromancy is but a tool, and those who use it determine whether that tool is used for ill or for good. Now, in my world, as in some others, magic works a little bit differently. You are born into your path. I don't have much time. This will not end well for me, but this must be said. <clears throat> In my world, a wizard is born into their path. As I was born to be a diviner, there are those who are born to necromancy. They are treated by our society as second-class citizen mages. Yes, they are a step above those who do not have magic within them, but still, their powers are slighted, and they are a separate caste. Their magic scene is unclean. Of course, this is hypocrisy in the highest regard. Uh, these uh, mages have no control over their path. They were born to it, oftentimes handed down to them by their parents. Uh, they, they have no justification in being treated as such, but because their magic is seen as unsightly and, and again, unclean, this is the treatment they are often given. However, necromancers are, in my world, just people. People who are given an ability, and that ability, to be frank and honest, as I am compelled by my runes and my, my geese against me, I must tell the truth. The state sponsors this bias. Necromancers in our world are forced to use their powers, either to create an unpaid labor force which is exploited by our society. Oh, you think those sewers clean themselves, do you? Do you think uh, ditches are dug by... No, there's no labor class anymore since people are all entitled and uh, driven to a kind of uh, 
blindness by those who would rule them into having easier lives because the labor is all done by, well, the walking dead, tightly controlled by the necromancers who are employed by the state to do such. And if you commit a ghastly crime in our society, well, your punishment lasts longer than your life does. As a result, we have large bodies of the undead who are kept safely outside of the awareness of the public to do much of our labor. If this gets out, there's going to be something about that, I assure you. These necromancers are just tasked to do a job. They have no say over it. In many cases, those who have rebelled against it have been called enemies of the state, further damaging the public opinion of necromancers. It's a sad state of affairs, to be honest, and one that I harshly disagree with. My own studies into necromancy have revealed that this necromancy is not an unholy evil abomination. There is good to be found in it. For the truly gifted necromancers, some of them do get a chance to break out of the chains of forced servitude, uh, employing their skills to create this labor force. Some of our finest healing facilities actually employ necromancers. They are able to take death energy, and sickness, injury, and they can pull it away from healthier tissues, sparing the afflicted. Uh, then a talented life mage can then go along and excise much of that death and uh, treat someone who otherwise, by life magic alone, could not have been saved. This does happen, although those who are that powerful are rare, admittedly. And of course, in our own civil defense, there are a few necromancers who are given license to practice their skills so that if they are called upon to snuff out the lives of those who the state deems is necessary, well, I don't need to tell you that that alone is enough to send chills down the spine of most. What many people understand, so few understand the impact. Many warning spells don't work against necromancy, right? Yes, a necromancer has a unique advantage in a duel, for instance. They oftentimes are not uh, using magics that proper wards that all young wizards are taught uh, protect against, and therefore a powerful necromancer is deadly to any wizard or uh, mundane. Uh, of course, the best warders can still, you know, adapt their magics to defend against necromancy, but necromancers have a place. They do not deserve to be looked down upon. They should be employed in a wider aspect to use their powers for good and have it encouraged rather than being slighted and, and driven down into the crust of our society and seen as less than uh, anything that is good. The fact that they only have one representative in the Mage Council who is a necromancer and even he is ignored widely is it's a travesty, honestly. Everywhere else, I would encourage you. Necromancers are oftentimes products of their environment, not of their magics. Treat the person, not the avenue that they have power. Of course, if they are evil, well, you do what you must. A truly powerful necromancer, if they are bent to evil, well, they must be dealt with, clearly. But don't jump to conclusions. Not all necromancers are evil. And the ones that aren't can do some amazingly good things. I have spent too long doing this. I am locating to Flynn. I cannot say when next I will see you again, but this had to be made. This needed to come out. Be safe out there, and may the gods of magic smile upon all of you. And may we see each other again soon. Farewell. Niasta. <laughs>